Good morning, guys. So this week, our nonfiction book that we're going to pair or go together with our After the Fall book is actually um, called Get Me Out of Here. And it's all about a special vocabulary word that we're going to learn about from science, which is called oviparous. Let's say that together. Oviparous. And all that oviparous means is means that you came from an egg. You hatched from an egg. So since we're talking about Humpty Dumpty, which is an egg, we're going to talk about oviparous animals and what can come from an egg. So right here on our cover from this book, you can see one of the animals that is an oviparous animal, and that is a chick. That's right. Chickens hatch with eggs. So real quick, I just want you to take a minute and brainstorm. Are there any other animals that you know about that hatch from eggs? Hmm. Let's see. Let's look at our table of contents in this nonfiction book and see if some of the animals you thought about are going to be on there. So in our table of contents, on page one, it says ovipar what? And that's just going to help us learn what oviparous means. On page two, birds. All types of birds hatch from eggs. On page three, reptiles. Remember, reptiles are animals that are cold-blooded, that have that scaly skin. So a reptile would be something um, like a crocodile or a snake. And then an amphibians on page four hatch from eggs or oviparous. Amphibians are like frogs that like to be around the water. Okay, on page five, fish. So fish hatch from eggs. Page six, arthropods, which we'll learn what page or what arthro arthropods are. Page seven, mammals. There are even a couple mammals that hatch from eggs. And page eight is our glossary. So if we don't understand a word, that's where we go. So ovipo what? When we hear the word egg, most of the time we think about chickens or breakfast. But I am sure you know that eggs are an extremely important element in life entering the world. Many animals, including all species of birds, lay eggs. These animals are referred to as oviparous animals. The eggs will look different based on the type of animal and where the egg will rest until it hatches. Some animals, like the ostrich, may lay only one large egg at a time and fuss over that egg until the young hatches. Other animals, like the crocodile, can lay up to 90 eggs at a time. Laying a large number of eggs is an adaptation. So an adaptation is something that helps an animal survive that many animals have adopted. 80% of young alligators will end up a prey of hungry predators. And for this reason, a large number of eggs increases the chances of hatchlings make it to adulthood. So they have so many at a time because they're so hunted and so many of them don't make it to being an adult. So birds. The egg-laying habits of a bird depend largely on how big he or she is and where it lives. For example, the rock hopper penguin, which we actually talked about when we talked about penguins, builds its nest out of pebbles, but the male emperor penguin holds its egg on top of its feet to keep it from freezing on the ice. Most birds sit on their eggs to incubate it. Remember, incubate means to keep them warm, including large birds like the swan. What does this tell you about a swan's eggshell? That's right. They must be strong enough to support the weight of the adult swan, which weighs around 30 pounds. Eggshells are also different colors. Many eggs are plain white, but eggs that are laid out in the open have markings to help camouflage them, just like humans. Other animals love the taste of eggs, so they are always on the hunt for an unprotected nest. This has forced birds to adapt survival techniques, such as camouflage for themselves and their young. When a hatchling is developing inside an egg, it uses the yolk as its source of food. That's the yellow part. The yolk is full of fat and protein. When they are hatched, birds will rely on their parents to bring them food. Unlike mammals who will receive their mother's milk, birds will need their parents to hunt for them. The adult birds will eat the food and then regurgitate them into the baby bird's mouth. That means they're going to throw it back up to it. Oof. Reptiles. Sea turtles have been on Earth for many years. This makes them part of one of the oldest animal families that at one point included dinosaurs. Their long history of survival makes it surprising that they don't have much maternal instinct when it comes to their young. So they don't really take care of the young. The female sea turtle emerges from the ocean in the middle of the night. She'll dig a deep hole 
and lay up to 110 ping pong ball size eggs. The group of eggs is called a clutch. She will cover the eggs with sand and then return to the ocean, never to meet her young, so she never takes care of her babies. Like with many reptiles, the temperature of the nest determines the gender of the hatchlings. Cooler temperatures lead to male hatchlings, so if it's cooler, it's going to be boy turtles. Warmer temperatures generate females. As soon as the turtles hatch, they start digging out of the hole. The baby turtles will wait right under the sand until it cools, knowing that cooler sand means it's nighttime. So even right after they hatch, they know they have to wait till it's dark and there will be less predators between them and the ocean. Digging out of the hole can take up to a week, so it could take them a long time. Once out of the hole, the babies scurry to the ocean. They are born with natural instincts that guide them towards the water. It is estimated that only one in a thousand hatchlings will survive to adulthood. So one in a thousand, that's not very good odds at all because things will try to hunt them and there's no one there to protect them. Amphibians. The word amphibia means two lives. These animals start their lives in water breathing through gills like frogs, but then they develop lungs and legs so that they can live on land. All amphibians can breathe and absorb water through their skin. Another characteristic that most amphibians have in common is they have three stages of their lives. They start as an egg, then they become a larva, and then they morph into their adult form. Female frogs lay a clump of eggs in a puddle or shallow water. The slimy texture of the eggs is a defense that keeps other animals from being able to gobble them up. The eggs soak up the water and become swollen. After 21 days, the embryo leaves the egg and quickly develops into a tadpole. Tadpoles look more like fish than frogs, but eventually they will develop arms and legs and lose their tails. Unlike tadpoles, frogs can leave the water. Large amounts of frogs' eggs increase the chance that at least a few of them will make it to adulthood. So it's just like the turtles. They lay a whole bunch of eggs because there's not going to be that many that are going to make it all the way. Fish. Fish are very uninvolved with their young. The mother lays the eggs in the water and the male fish fertilize the eggs. There are only a few kind of fish, such as the bullhead, who stay around long enough to protect the eggs, or guppies, after they are born. Because so many of the larvae will be eaten before they have a chance to hatch, many fish lay an extremely large amount of eggs. Female cod produce up to 9 million eggs in one year. So it takes a lot of them because there's not going to be that many that are going to grow up. Have you heard of a salmon run? This is the time of year when adult salmon leave the ocean and swim upstream through rivers. Grizzly bears and bald eagles have learned to be on the watch for these tasty fish as they migrate. Migrate means from move to one place to another upstream. Although it can be dangerous for the fish, scientists say they have a sense on their body that alerts them when they need to go back up to their birthplace. Once they reach the river entrance, they use their sense of smell to find their exact hatchling ground. Then they lay their eggs and then they die. Then the cycle starts all over again. Arthropods, I told you we'd learn what this means, arthropods. An arthropod is an animal that does not have a spine like us, that backbone. Instead, it has an exoskeleton. Now an exoskeleton, we're gonna talk more about when we talk about insects. So it's, an exoskeleton is like a hard shell but it's not a, a full skeleton like ours. And it's on the exo, the outside. A segmented body and at least six jointed legs. 80% of all living animals on earth are arthropods. There are over a million different species. Some examples are spiders, lobsters, crabs, scorpions, insects, and shrimp. They are the most diverse animal group. Many people fear the distinct spider known as the tarantula but they rarely bite unless they are defending their egg sac. Females lay anywhere between 50 to 2,000 eggs in the sac, and then in about six to eight weeks time, they guard it. Much like birds brood by sitting on their eggs, the tarantula birds broods by turning the egg sac over and over again. The spiderlings are on their own as soon as they hatch. Most young spiders will be eaten by predators such as snakes, um, birds and weasels.
So it's actually her wait till they hatch, but then she leaves them alone. And mammals. You may be surprised to see mammals make an appearance in this book at all because the definition of a mammal is someone that gives birth to live babies. Or you may already know that there are only two mammals that lay eggs, the platypus and the spiny anteater. The spiny anteater, also known as the echidna, can be found in Australia and New Guinea, covered in hair and spines. These curious creatures look more like porcupines or hedgehogs. It has taken a long time for scientists to learn about this mammal because they prefer caves and holes underground to escape extreme temperatures. The echidna lays one soft but leathery egg in her pouch. After 10 days, the egg will hatch and the baby known as a puggle will be the size of a jelly bean. The puggle will stay in the pouch and drink its mother's milk for two to three months. So even though it's a part of an egg, the mother still keeps it in her pouch and then she still feeds it afterwards. These oviparous animals are extremely different, but the one thing they all have in common is just how fascinating they are. And then we have our glossary. So some of the words that you might have heard, absorb means to take something in like liquid. Remember those fish eggs absorb the water around it and it makes them swell or get bigger. Adaptation is an adjustment or change in order to survive. So camouflage is an adaptation because it helps you survive and hide from your predator. Emerges means to come out of something. And then the exoskeleton is that supportive covering outside of an animal. So it's not a skeleton like ours or anything, okay? And then migrate is to pass from one region to another. And then survival technique are skills or habits that help an animal live. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and show you what we're going to do with our oviparous animal book in Seesaw. All right, so in Seesaw, you are going to have these slides, and it's the different animals that we had on each page. And you can always go back and look. So for example, we talked about birds. And then what you're going to do is you are either going to use the pen to write out the fact about birds and how they're oviparous animals, or you can use the microphone and tell me about how birds and how they hatch and what they do to take care of their young. And then you'll just go to the next slide. So you can tell me what you know about um, snakes or reptiles and their eggs. And then we have amphibians remember amphibians means two lives so they start out in the water as their eggs and then they go on to land and then fish tell me about fish and their eggs and then remember mammals these are the interesting one because there's only two mammals that can lay eggs and then you can also tell me about insects or arthropods okay all right you guys are doing such an awesome job i can't wait to hear about the facts that you learned about our story